Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Ninja Guide and Sigma Beginner's Guide to Master Ninja Mode. This is Chapter 6, The City of Fiends. And uh, this is actually a very hard level, I think. And the reason I think this is there is a gauntlet coming up towards the end of the level where you have to go through a bunch of red ninjas, uh, a bunch of biker bullshit, a bunch of dinosaurs, and then a boss. And uh, I know that sounds like the most random sequence of fights ever, and it pretty much is. But when you begin, uh, if you jump off the roof the way that I did, once you get the Talisman of Rebirth, you will skip the fights inside. You'll also skip the map if that's important to you, so it's entirely up to you. But when you get down here almost every time, these guys will spawn on the bikes. So, these guys aren't too bad when there's just two of them. The only problem is when you block their attacks, they still do damage to you. And uh, I don't like fighting them, so I just Nimpo 1 and then use his essence to kill his buddy. I'm, I've, I have nowhere near finessed guillotine throwing them off the bikes and killing them because, you know, I just I just haven't. I really, I haven't really tried, if I'm honest. I just read a couple of different places that it's an awkward timing. I was like, fuck that. But once you get rid of these two guys, it's going to make two, it's going to make sure that that purple field goes down and then I can go up here, I can get the windmill shuriken and I can also get the secret spot where you get your life. So, if you do shurikens and you press Y with your weapon, you will go farer than your normal double jump. That is the tablet of Team Ninja that comes up and heals you for some strange mystical reason. And the windmill shuriken is just on that plinth there. So, this will heal you every time you touch it. It's kind of like the, you know, the fountain of youth pedophile. But, the thing with it is, it's, there's only three of them in the game, I believe. And uh, th there may be more, don't hold me to that, but I've only found three. And if you can get back to them, make sure you use them, it'll save you items and things. But in all honesty, I don't really use them that often because they're just, you know, only after certain sections, like just then. And uh, that's the, probably the best the best way to, to keep stocked up on them. But what we're going to be doing now is we've just got the Lily Key, I believe. So we're going to be moving all the way back through Tyron to go through the door near the safe point in that courtyard that I don't enjoy. But before we get there, we're going to have to fight a couple more of these black upgraded soldiers. And, um, yeah, these guys are a pain in the ass. They really are. It's, it's just like that there, that kick that they do. That kick breaks your guard and knocks you into the air. And they can juggle you if you're not careful. You need to be careful of that. It's, it's, it's a pain in the ass that move especially, but like everything else, they are as lethal to you as you are to them when you get them in the right situation. And that's one of the things that I like about the boss fights on this. The, the lives of the bosses, sure they've got a really big life bar, but if you know what you're doing, you can take it down really fast. And uh, that leads me to uh, the unlabored flawlessness, which is um, a weapon and a technique I'm going to be using later on. And, and what this is, is you'll notice that there for 500, you know, credits, <laughs> credits will do fine. <laughs> for 500 chak rounds, you can get the little bit of your pussy. No, you can get the wooden sword. And you're probably thinking, why would I want a wooden sword? It doesn't look very good. It, it isn't very good, if you're honest. But it has, I think, seven upgrades to it. And once you upgrade it seven times, it turns into a massive paddle that you row with, like a massive oar. And it's an oar with a bunch of, of like kanji inscribed into it. And it's a very slow but very powerful weapon. It, it performs much like the, the Dabi Leharo, or whatever that's called, the Dabi, as I call it. The only difference is, it's I think it's a little bit more powerful. But they, they don't have that many combos, and... Because they're slow, they seem like they're not really that good of weapons, but when you learn how to use them, they're, they're so powerful. And, and the the UF, as it's called, the Unlabored Flawlessness, has this ability that when you're in 10% of your overall life, uh, all the kanji, all the, the written inscribed runes on the, the blade, well, I said blade, on the body of the ore begin to glow. And what happens is, when they begin to glow, you do, like, 75% more damage on everything. So this thing murders every enemy very quickly, and it does massive damage to bosses. And if you do the, the UTs, the, the ultimate techniques with it, you can take half a boss's life off on Master Ninja with this, this ability. It is ridiculously powerful. And... I wish it was in Ninja Gaiden 2 because it is the fucking coolest thing ever and I hope it comes back in Ninja Gaiden 3 because there's just something really terrifying but really rewarding about having really low life, putting that weapon on and then skull fucking a boss. It is just amazing. 
but when you come around this corner, these guys always spawn. They're a pain in the ass. So the, there I got shurikened. I used the execution move to, to give me iframes to survive the, the explosion. And the rest is just Izuna drops and, and lots of blocking. But like I say, they're hard to get used to fighting those ninjas. I'm still not used to fighting them. And on this section, there's a lot of them. Like when you move through here, sometimes there's, there's enemies. But sometimes there isn't. It seems like a funny spawn. Like you've got to be careful going through that. But use your save point. Coming up here is a bunch of bikers. I never fight this fight. I'm not going for karma. I'm not. I'm not going for you know massive skills. Just showing you how to do it, and that is a pointless fight. I hate the bikes. I fucking hate the bikers more. It's just a bad enemy that should not be in the game, in my opinion. But when you come up here, there's going to be a grenade launcher guy and a bunch of the soldiers. So take them out as you've been taking them out previously. Izuna drops on landing charges things like that and uh, just be careful here because there's a couple of avenues to actually fall off this balcony this this little corridor area and I do it a lot so you want to be be aware of that not too sure why I put the lunar on here I think I put it on in preparation to break the wall only to realize that you can't break the wall with with heavy attacks until you have the shurikens it's kind of the game's way of saying you do not have the item that allows you to break this yet so this is me trying to smash this wondering why is it not breaking and then I kind of click on you've got to probably have the incendiary shurikens because uh, you do not have to use a shuriken on those on those cracked walls you can use the the heavy hits of a weapon and it will break them I know the dabby breaks them I think the luna breaks them uh, that's me fucking up my drop and watch this enemies back again they are there every time you come through that moat road every single time so the best thing to do is unless you want to practice fighting them or you want to you know if you're insane enough to farm essence off them or something, feel free to attack them. I don't. As soon as you get here, it will despawn them. They will run back to where they came from and you don't have to worry about them. And there's there's a couple of little spots that conflict with the the, the path of the enemies which will stop them from attacking you and areas that will make them despawn. There's a couple of those that uh, obviously I've not figured them out myself. You know, the, the very first time. These have probably been figured out millions of times before, but they're the ones that I dropped on when I was playing that I will show you guys that are probably well documented. I'm not too sure about that, but they're the ones that I found that that helped me, so I'm going to show you those as well. But once again, I fuck up my, my jump. Probably should have edited this out to make me look like a, a platforming master, but I just didn't have the time. And One thing to bear in mind, when you are in combat and you're trying to examine something, the game automatically prioritizes attacking over examining so the only way to, to change this is to use a smoke bomb and uh, I am by no means very good with the smoke bombs but I'm gradually learning their ability and the, the, the simplest terms to understand them is as long as none of the enemies are attacking you, if you drop a smoke bomb, it stops them from being able to, to lock onto you for a couple of seconds and it confuses the, the AI. So it sometimes enables you to charge a, a, an ET or just to get into a better position. And if you want to save and you don't and you've got a bunch of enemies around you, if you drop a smoke bomb, it'll enable you to save because it takes the lock on off. And instead of attacking the enemies, you go back to just being kind of neutral. So it's super useful for getting past archers, for getting past, you know, cheesy projectile enemies. Or uh, if you're up against a big guy and you want to get away from him and have a couple of extra seconds to charge an ultimate technique, it's really useful for them. But, as I say, I am by no means very good with the smoke bombs. There, there are times when I could probably use them and get off a bunch of ultimate techniques and I just, I'm not comfortable with them yet. It's something I need to learn. But once you, you pull that, it's going to lower the drawbridge and it's going to enable us to get onto the next section of, of the level. But once you're saved, you can b go back to moving up to where the, the bikers were. Completely just, you know, I think it's reverse wind, this technique. I know it's called that on the second one, but I don't know what things are called on the first ones. I didn't really read much on this. I just wanted to play for, for the action. I didn't pay too much attention to the story because it was thin as fuck. And um, when you move up here, as soon as you trigger at the top of this avenue, there is going to be three fire ninjas that drop every single time. They'll drop from the sky. There they are. You see, I drop the smoke bomb, I go to the safe point. And uh, the rest of that fight is going to be in the second part of the video, guys. But unfortunately, that enemy will spawn there every single time. So if you die and you come back at that checkpoint, at that safe point, they will drop. If you come back through that road and uh, you've not killed them, they will drop again. If you do kill them, they despawn until you have to go through that area again fresh. So just bear that in mind. And as always, you take care now.